the chemistry of alkenes, right? Alkene chemistry. The first question is, what is an alkene? Well, as you know from your standard grade days, it's a molecule which has a carbon to carbon double bond. That's its functional group. But what we want to know is, what's the chemistry of these substances? Can we draw their structures? Can we explain what they're doing? Maybe we should begin, first of all, by naming some alkenes. Suppose, for example, we had a molecule that had, let's say, five carbon atoms and a double bond in that position there. What name would that have? Well, we apply the rules that we apply to any molecule. The longest carbon chain here is five, so we're looking up penta. Pent. It's pentene, isn't it? Pentene. But is that good enough? Well, no. Because pentene could refer to this molecule or to this molecule. We have to specify just whereabouts that double bond is. If we call this carbon atom number one and this carbon atom number two, we could call it pent two e. Would it matter if we number it from the other side? That was carbon atom number one, carbon atom number two. From this side, one, two, three. Well, we always use the smaller, the smallest number possible. So we would number it from the left-hand side to imply that the double bond begins on carbon atom number two. This structure must have isomers. For example, we could try something like this, let's say. What would we have here? We still have five carbon atoms, we still have a double bond, we still have the same overall formula. But what do we have this time? Well, this time we have butene. Or to be more accurate, but one We need to show that the double bond is here. So if this is but one in, meaning four carbons with a double bond at the end of the chain. What is this? This is a methyl group, CH3, methyl. Methyl butene. Is that good enough? No, because this could have been there, for example. We have to show that if this is carbon atom number one, and remember we give the double bond priority by giving the smallest number, one, two, three. This is on the third of these carbon atoms. Three methyl butene. By the way, what about the formula for this thing? Well, think about it, it's an alkene. And back in your standard grade days, you may recall learning that these have the general formula CH2N. There's twice as many hydrogens as carbons. So, as soon as we realize there are five carbons, there must be ten hydrogens. Those two structures must both have the formula C5H10. Let's try one more Example. One more example at random, will we? I've got something like this, let's see. This a little bit over the top, but this can crop up in the exam. Let's put a double bond there, will we? You notice I always leave a couple of hydrogens out. We don't fill it up. This is unsaturated. If I was to put hydrogens there, that would be fundamentally wrong. You cannot have five bonds around a carbon atom. Let's say there are gaps there. Well, how do we name this alkene? Again, cover up the branches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is hex. Hexene. Hexene. But that's not good enough. We need to see whereabouts the double bond is. Is it on the one, two, three, fourth carbon atom? Or is it on the one, two, the second carbon atom? The second carbon atom. We give it the lowest number possible. So hex. 2E describes the main chain. So if we've decided that this is carbon atom number 2, that must be 3, that must be 4, and that must be 5. So we'll need to use numbers 4 and 5 to show where these branches are. Now we've got two of these branches, and they're simple little branches called methyl. There are two of them, so we'll call them dimethyl. So we're almost there. This is dimethyl hex 2E. But where are the methyls? One of them is on carbon atom number four, and the other one on carbon atom number five. So four, five, hyphen, dimethyl hex two e. There we have it. So so much for naming and drawing alkenes. What else can we do? Well, what's their rep? What uh, what do these substances do? Their main claim to fame is addition. They take part in addition reactions. 
meaning as the name implies, you can add atoms to the structure. Because you have a double bond, various substances can add to that double bond and produce a different molecule. For example, the two that you learned in standard grade were bromine. You might remember that bromine, when it reacts with a double bond, changes colour. It changes from orange to colourless. If bromine is to add on, each of the two bromine atoms will add on like that. The only other substance you meant standing grade which can add on was hydrogen. So once again, if you have a double bond and you add hydrogen, same again. One hydrogen atom goes on one carbon atom and the other hydrogen on the other one. But there are many other substances which can add on. They're usually simple little molecules. If cloning can add on, Presumably chlorine. If bromine can add on, surely chlorine can add on. And it would be much the same if we get a chlorine adding on either side. How about, say, another simple molecule? Let's take the likes of, say, hydrogen chloride. That would do something similar. But this time, it follows that a hydrogen atom group on one side and the chlorine on the other. The only other common one you're likely to come across is water. When water adds on, the water acts as if it was H joined to OH. So the H atom, the hydrogen atom, goes on one carbon and the OH on the other. But it's a very simple process addition. One of two terms to point out to you adding water, hydration. Hydration means adding water. How about adding chlorine? We could use the term. Chlorination. Adding hydrogen. Hydrogenation. Or hydrogenation is pronounced. Hydrogenation. These are terms you're expected to be. Probably hydrogenation and hydration are the two you're likely to meet more than any. They sound similar, but they're not the same thing. Now, this isn't just quite as straightforward as it appears. Let's take a, an example of an additional reaction and see what the consequences are. For example, let's take something like this, a simple little molecule, and add to it. Now, what is that? Well, we've got three carbon atoms and a double bond. It's propene, isn't it? Propene for the three carbons, in for the double bond. We don't need a number because if it was in this position, it would be exactly the same molecule. What can we add? Let, let's add, say, chlorine. If we were to add chlorine to this, what would the product be? Well, one chlorine atom will add on there, and the other chlorine atom will add on there. The double bond breaks open, and we end up with a structure like that. You'd be expected to name that structure. Well, it's no longer propene. It's now something more like propane. It's gone from being unsaturated to saturated. So this is basically propane. It's propane with two chlorines. So we can use the term dichloro. Now well, that just about does it, dichloropropane. However, we need to show where these chlorines are. In another example, they could have ended up, for example, on the same carbon atom. But here, they've ended up, obviously, in separate carbon atoms. We'll use the smallest number possible. Let's call that carbon atom number one and carbon atom number two. And for that reason, we end up with one, two dichloropropane. You should manage to do that without too much difficulty. A complication arises when the molecule we're adding on is just a little, little bit different from that. Let's take, say, this example. Let's take butene, or to be more accurate, but one e Here there it is, but for, for the four carbon atoms, but one e And this time, we'll add a molecule such as hydrogen bromide. Now where's the complication? Well the problem is, which way around does this add on? There are two possibilities, and this is where you need your wits about, you have to, to think. The H and the BR can add on like that. Equally, they could add on the other way around. Maybe the bromine goes there. Maybe the hydrogen prefers to be there. You're not expected to know if either of these is preferred. 
The point is, there are two possible products, each with its own unique name. What would this be? Well, this thing here is no longer butene, it's butane. It's going from unsaturated to saturated. So this one up here is basically butane. It is butane with a bromine. So we can call it bromo butane. And where is this bromine? It's on the first carbon atom. Always use the smallest number possible. One bromo butane. Whereas this one is also bromo butane. It's an isomer of that. They both have the same formula. But this is two bromo butane because obviously it's on the second carbon. One final example worth looking at. Let's take a molecule such as, say, this one. What about here? We have five carbons, pent, double bond, pentene. Is that good enough, pentene? No. We need to specify precisely where the double bond is. The double bond is on the second carbon atom, not the third carbon atom. But the second, we want to use the smallest numbers possible. So, pent 2 e is a better name. Let's add water to this. What do we call adding water? Hydration. This is hydration. It's the same problem as before. The water can add on in one of two ways. The H in the water could add on to one atom and the OH in the other. So, there are two outcomes. Either the water adds on across the double bonds like this, HOH, or it adds on the other way round. Maybe it's HOH. Does it matter? Yes, it does. There are two different products. These products are alcohols. OH is what makes these alcohols. This one is the alcohol with five carbons. Pentanol, but because this is on the second carbon, we'll call it pentan 2 all Pentan 2 all What is this alcohol? It's an isomer with the OH on the third carbon atom, making it pentan 3 all So there we have it alkenes. They contain carbon carbon double bonds, they have the general formula CNH2N. They have to be named in such a way that you can tell whereabouts the double bond is, and to be very precise. The main thing that alkenes do is they take part in addition reactions. At standard range, you only have to know about bromine and hydrogen, but at higher, there are other simple molecules which add on. If the molecule adding on is a simple molecule, then we don't have to worry how it adds on, the way around it goes. But if there are different atoms in the molecule, we've got to stop and realise sometimes, often, there's more than one possible structure.